Hey everyone, this is Cameron with Motion Science and I am back today with another tip slash trick for motion design and this one has to do with parallaxing. Now, if you haven't already checked out my course on parallaxing, it's called Beyond the Parallax Effect. It's at motionscience.tv and it really dives deep into what you can accomplish with the parallax effect. It goes beyond some of the typical things uh, you've probably seen on the internet. So I was approached by a client to create a uh, interesting shot out of a photograph with this biker going through a tunnel. And I thought, well, hey, what better way to create an interesting shot with a photograph than to use parallaxing? So what I came up with is this shot right here. And if you look at the shot, it looks like this guy is riding a bike through a tunnel and that the tunnel is moving past the camera. So that's what I wanted to show you today is how I created uh, this effect using a really simple technique inside of After Effects, but you can use it with uh, Nuke or, or whatever uh, motion design program you're using. So what I did is I started with uh, the photograph in Photoshop. I'm not gonna dive in here to what the process is to cut out an image, but essentially I started with this original image. I duplicated the layer. I created a tunnel where I painted out the biker. And then I duplicated the original layer again and I isolated the biker with a mask. So the two layers I'm gonna use are the tunnel and the biker. So once I've got those all layered up in Photoshop, I jump into After Effects and I bring those layers into a composition, which is right here. Now, one of the first things I'm gonna do is, if I zoom in here, you can see that the uh, bottom of the bike has been feathered off and that's because I added a mask, which you can see right there. Uh, without the mask, it just created a hard kind of weird edge that I could have fixed this in Photoshop, but anyways, I wanted to mask this off and make it uh, kind of blend better, better into the background. So, okay. So next thing I did is I took the background layer and I positioned it back in Z space. Obviously these are 3d layers. I positioned it back 2000 pixels, which doesn't look like a lot, but we don't need a lot of uh, parallaxing to sell the effect here. I also scaled it up just slightly. So there you go. So it's back in Z space by 2000 pixels, but it's scaled up to 112%. So it essentially looks like the same photograph that we originally started with, but there is some Z separation here. So the next thing I'm going to do before I add any type of camera is I'm going to take the biker and I'm going to keyframe the position of the biker. I'm going to set a keyframe here, move to the end of my timeline, and uh, most of the time you think a biker is moving forward. Well, when I did the shot, I can't remember the actual reasoning behind it, but I found that moving the biker back slightly actually uh, made the effect look cooler. So it's all by, by look here. So I'm gonna move him back in space just by about, I don't know, 650 pixels or so. Actually, I wanna do more than that. I'm also gonna scoot him to the left just slightly. So there you go. And we can kind of follow this line here. You can see this light and dark gray. If I zoom in, that could be our line of perspective. So if at zero, we've got this much space between this line and the tire, if I go to the end here, you can see, well, he's too far to the left. Scoot him slightly to the right. So it's not perfect, but it's by uh, eye here. So let's move them there. Yeah, cool. Okay, so what I did was I brought that pre-comp into another composition, which you see right here. I'm going to scale this composition down to about 25%. The photo that I was provided to me was huge. And a lot of times um, I work with the original size of the image in case um, the, the guy who did the touch up on the photography sends me an updated version. I can easily update that layer in Photoshop 
and there's not a scaling issue going on, I'd rather scale the full size image down in After Effects and work with it that way. Now there are some drawbacks to that. After Effects a lot of times has uh, issues working with really high res files. It slows down your renders, it slows down your, your previews. Um, but I just prefer to work that way. So anyway, so the image is scaled down now. And I'm gonna add a camera. Go to layer new camera. And got my presets here, but I'm gonna stick with 35 millimeter. Uh, no depth of field is needed for this particular shot. And I'm gonna set a keyframe here. And I'm gonna go to the end of the timeline. And you saw there that the biker moves back in space. And I'm gonna go ahead and push the camera forward just a little bit, probably somewhere in here. So the biker's moving backwards, but the camera's moving forward. So let me preview this. Okay, so here we can see what it's like by animating the biker in the pre-comp and adding a slight camera move to the shot. So we've created parallax, but it's still not where I want it to be. So the next trick, and this is the cool parallaxing trick, is to use an effect under distort called optics compensation. And I've applied this to the pre, pre-comped bike layer. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to the beginning. I'm gonna set a keyframe, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up. I'm gonna set it to 50. And the trick here is to hit reverse lens distortion. And I'll show you what, you see how that, see how the, the background came at us when I clicked that? See that? That's what reverse lens distortion does. That's how, it kind of like it turns the, uh, it turns the parallax effect on. Um, I'm also gonna set the view center so that it's not centered in the screen, but it's centered a little bit more, maybe down in here. And you can see how that affects the image. But anyways, we're gonna go to the end of the timeline and we're going to set another keyframe to 125. And you see that, see how it stretches? This is with the effect and without. With, without. So let me show you a preview of this. So there we go, there's the enhanced parallax effect by simply adding the optics compensation distortion filter. And uh, one other quick thing, you'll see right at the end of this that the uh, mountain tunnel here looks a little you know, too stretched for my taste right at the end. So what we can do is we can add a new solid. Let's make it black. And then we'll go to the effect and we'll go to stylize CC vignette. Oops. And we'll make this solid a, an adjustment layer. And we'll just increase the vignette. So if I turn the adjustment layer off, you can see the sides there. But I'll just uh, drag the center point of the vignette to the right, maybe up a little bit. And I'll increase the amount. So there, so now you can't see the uh, sides when it stretches too far out. And there we go, that's optics compensation to create the parallax effect. So until next time, I'm Cameron, and this is Motion Science.